Hello and welcome to another Faith and Friends. I'm Jennifer Beck with Mark Kuntz and Andy Lynch. We are thrilled to spend this wonderful week in January <laughs> with you. We made it through last week's cold snap and we're still still here to talk about it. Well, it wasn't that cold. I mean, just because it was under zero, that doesn't mean it's cold. I was just going to say, you were in Miami. <laughs> I, it was a little bit chilly the one day. Uh, you know, we had to wear our pants and, and long sleeve shirts for the actual Orange Bowl game itself. I mean, it was... It got down to the 60s. I mean, that's some serious business. Had the windbreaker in the car just in case. You know, Absolutely. I did realize I was I was thinking about your trip back from Miami, and you arrived right right when the storm came, and you really had like a 120 degree temperature difference yeah. for you in a matter of 48 hours. When you when you take into consideration the wind chill, and some people say the wind chill is a myth anyways because nobody knows what it really <laughs> feels like to be negative 40 <laughs> degrees, but. Yeah, it was about 80 degrees uh, a couple of days down in Florida, and then we get back on uh, Sunday before the storm really hit, thankfully. And then, yeah, it was, the wind chill was like negative 40 on Monday, so it could have been potentially a 120-degree wraparound, but I stayed warm on Monday inside my apartment. I would have run to work, but Alaska boy here told me I shouldn't. Yeah, you could have died. I was looking out for you. I didn't want you to die. It's important that we don't die before we're supposed to. Well, of course, there's been a lot of talk about the cold the temperatures, perhaps grocery store shelves being empty. But here's an interesting perspective on the cold and snow from Hannah Beck Music. Snow is such a wonderful reminder that God washes us clean, regardless of what we have done in the past. And that leads us into our scripture passage for today. It's Isaiah 1, 17 through 18. Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your, skins, your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Isn't that a great picture? You think of snow. Can you imagine how red blood on snow is mm -hmm. and how stained it is? And that's, that's how our lives are until Jesus comes in and wipes us completely clean. As white as that fresh fallen snow, the snow you're allowing your kids to go out and eat. Not the snow that's gotten dirty, snow. yeah, or, or the yellow, even red snow for that matter. Or no red snow, but it's just a great picture, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful, and to remind, to remember that um, that whiteness is what God sees when He sees that forgiveness of us. Well, here's a look at what's coming up today on Faith and Friends, an inspiring story with local athlete Cam Etzler. You'll definitely want to hear about the way God has been working in his life. Mark talks food with the Girl Scouts. It is Girl Scout cookie time again. Mm. That's right. This week we get to test out the cookies while Andy gets to try. Well, we'll just keep it a surprise as to what Andy gets to try. It's, we'll just let you know it's not necessarily cookies. What are you making me eat? What do I, is going to be placed before me with a blindfold that I will not know? You do Maybe not want to miss it. Maybe it's something to eat. Maybe it's something to drink. Oh, well, I am thirsty. But this is the month of January. New year, new beginnings, even for me as I try something I might not like. It's some interesting national holidays. It's International Brain Teaser Month, National Clean Up Your Computer Month, as well as an important one, Celebration of Life Month. It's also National Book Month, hmm. which leads us to some interesting statistics. What are you reading? Christian-related materials continue to be hot sellers, and maybe you're among those who love to buy some of these things. Well, the Christian Booksellers Association and Evangelical Christian Publishers Association state that the majority of Christian books sold are Christian fiction literature. 69% chick flick literature, yeah. Old West books. And Amish love stories are the top sellers. Mark and Andy, okay, fess up. How many of those do you have on your on your shelves? The love westerns are the best. I don't have any chick <laughs> literature. I subscribe to the philosophy that any book should have an index in the back of it, whether that be the concordance of your Bible or an index for some good non-fiction. But the other top sellers are Christian classics like the Chronicles of Narnia, Christian suspense books. But interestingly, not all, at all high on the list are the non-fiction Christian books designed to point people closer to Christ. Of course, there are lots of places out there you can get some good Christian living help. And I, I've recently been reading a book called The Calvary Road. It's by Roy Hessian. It's an older style book. It was written before the 50s, which I sometimes struggle with. But I want to read you a quick passage. Certainly for those who have humbled themselves under the hand of God, the place where sins are washed away, it has meant the revival of their Christian lives in the truest and simplest sense of the word. That's what we're trying to do. Revive our lives day in and day out. We make that decision to follow Jesus, but then it's not just a one and done deal. You are continually meeting before the throne of God, saying, what do I need to get rid of in my life? What do I need to approve upon? And God, can I just sit with you for a while and see what you had to say to me? 
Well, another book that I believe is worth reading is written by author Beth Huffman. It's the story of a local woman who survived cancer only to face another very difficult situation in which she simply had to cling to God to make it through. Nancy Muller talks with Huffman and Kim Brinkman-Smith about the recently published book, Listen to Me. Hi everyone, we have two very special guests joining us today that will share a tremendous story of faith and will inspire you as well. Joining me is Beth Huffman. Beth, if you might remember, was on my show about three years ago mm -hmm. talking about a book um, from a that featured a story involving one of your former students. Right. And something similar with this new book called Listen to Me, and this book is about Kim Smith, who is also joining us. Welcome to you. Thank you. Well, Beth, you have been busy. I know that um, this book was really completed within a year, wasn't it? Yes, and it literally just happened. The, I, in talking about Kim, she was also a former student, and I had her in middle school, and the emphasis, it would appear, is about her having cancer when she was a teenager. And the irony to that is, and the beautiful irony is, is her surviving and now being a witness and, and testimonies that she shares with people. But after her final chemos were over, and she was 17 years old at that point, we went to Red Lobster for lunch and I'll never forget how beautiful she looked in her ball cap, you know, mm -hmm. having lost her hair, and just as sturdy as could be. And I said to her that day, Kim, you should write a book one day about everything you've gone through. Yeah. Well, to come full circle quickly, I thought the book would really be about her daughter and Kim will tell you shortly that Avery was born with a hearing impairment. Mm -hmm. And about a year and a half ago, I saw Avery for the first time in our neighbor's yard. And I did not know she was hearing impaired until I saw the hearing aids. And after meeting her, I went into the house and said to my husband, you know, I really thought Run, Amy, Run was the last book. Do you think you could put up with me if I wrote one more book? Right. And so then that led to my wondering, should I call Kim? Would that be an intrusion in their lives? Would she be open to wanting this mm -hmm. done? Mm -hmm. And here we are. So Kim, how does it feel to have a book written about your journey? Because your journey has taken many twists and turns. And um, you know, when you were 16, and at such a, a young, mm -hmm. impressionable age, mm -hmm. um, where you're old enough to understand what's going on. Um, how does this feel to have that story put on paper? This is really um, a dream that I've had to have the book written. Um, what I felt back then when I was 16 and going through cancer, I knew I wanted my story to be told. And then as well, when we were being um, in the first several years of Avery's life, I felt our story would be told as well, but I felt my story was going to be told based on my prayers of healing for her. Mm -hmm. And that's what the main struggle for me was, um, accepting that I kept asking God to heal her and I wasn't seeing the results. And so for the first several years of her life, I um, tried to hide as best as I could, probably the anger towards God and the um, depression that I was feeling, not being heard, and probably also the disconnect that I felt from the Lord. And I would go to church every Sunday and praise this God that inside I was really starting to question. And so I was thinking I was going to tell the story and put God in my life and in my plans, but becoming and expecting, um, and I guess accepting Avery's hearing loss and getting through that journey changed the path. And so God was allowed to use us the way he wanted us to. So this is a, an answer to dreams. All right. 
Well, I'll tell you what, we are actually out of time, but we will be back next week to talk mm -hmm. more with you about, the, uh, about your journey and your writing process. We want to thank both of you ladies for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Back to you. Thank you, Nancy. Now, next week on Faith and Friends, Nancy goes deeper into Kim Smith's story of how God carried her through these times in her life and how he can carry you through rough times as well. Now, in the meantime, you can pick up your own copy of Listen to Me by Beth Huffman by visiting www.danceintherain.me or you can email her directly at bethhm at roadrunner. Com. We love to tell you stories of how God is working in the lives of those in this region. Today's Orthopedic Institute of Ohio Faith on the Field segment takes us to Convoy, where Andy Lynch introduces us to Crestview's Cam Etzler, who comes from a talented family athletically, but we see that the spiritual base goes even deeper in making the Crestview senior who he is today. best feeling I've ever had in my life over any academic awards, athletic awards, is just you know that you've given your life fully to Christ and that's that's the main purpose in life. Cam Etzler's talking about when he got baptized a year and a half ago. Probably the best decision I've ever made. I, it was after a conversation I had with uh, my Uncle Ray who the gym's named after uh, and he had talked about prayer life being number one and it was in a time where uh, my life was kind of uh, shattered into some pieces just um, athletically, academically, and just relationships with friends, families, and coaches. Um, but uh, after I talked to my pastor and my youth pastor, it, it was a decision that I uh, decided to make because I had never been baptized as a child. Longtime coach Ray Etzler has been a spiritual giant for his family. A very big part. Obviously, he instilled that on uh, my uncles and uh, my cousins and obviously my dad. Um, but it's it's more it's more than just a athletic thing it's more spiritually I just had a talk with him a couple weeks ago and he, it was it was basically the exact it was mirrored of the same uh, conversation that we had about a year and a half ago so um, athletically obviously he's he's a big part of my life but also a very big part spiritually and Cam has also had other role models to look up to, like current assistant coach Tony Springer. We had been families, family friends with them uh, for I don't know how long. Our families have been friends since birth. And I just grew up with him, and I always saw him as a role model because uh, he, I'd hang out with him in the summer and during basketball seasons. So uh, he was always the guy I kind of looked up to. Etzler will continue his basketball career at Division Three Anderson of the Heartland Conference. My main reason was basketball, but uh, when I visited campus, uh, the it's a great spiritual place. They have chapel on campus. They have churches around the area, and uh, the coaching staff, just the atmosphere there was uh, very, very appealing and just somewhere I'd like to be. And the student that was responsible for starting a Fellowship of Christian Athletes huddle at Crestview looks to share the love of Christ through his game. It's given me the opportunity to meet a lot more people and obviously reach a lot more people because I've had the opportunity to be around people who may not have that spiritual side that just know me based on athletics. And I have met some people that were kind of surprised about it because they just saw me as an athlete and kind of the stereotypical athlete. Uh, uh, stigma that's attached to it, but um, it's it's really helped me relate to younger kids too because they see me as an athlete and as a role model, which uh, gives me the opportunity to reach out to them more. Cam Etzler, certainly a quality young person doing great things in our community. We think of Matt Barr from Kenton, another one of those guys that just totally gets it, diving in for God and just looking for opportunities to reach I out. I am just so thankful. You know, in my high school years, I did not remember much of anybody who was willing to step out there and share their faith. And I'm just so thankful anytime you young people are willing to do that, praise the Lord, that is what we need in this next generation. Just a great young man there, mm -hmm. great catching up with him. Well, for weeks, you've been hearing us talk about Campaign 2014, Hope for the Future. We are so grateful for the many of you who have partnered with us with TV44. How about an update on our campaign goal? We're over that 150000 Dollars. We made it. We are currently at one hundred fifty-four thousand wow. dollars. We need the big drum roll, the big claps. This is great. We want to thank the Creek family, of course, very athletically gifted, and they always have believed in what we do here at TV44. Thank you for your monthly gift. Also, want to say thank you to Ronald Basus of Defiance. I said his name earlier. I hope I said your name correctly. We're you so did it differently last time. <laughs> 
No, didn't maybe I didn't. You're covering. Okay. Really appreciative of your of right your place. generous gift, yeah. George Pike of Hicksville, Ohio. Thank you as well, Mr. And Mrs. Tom Wall. Thanks for being such a big part of the TV station as well, and for your gift to our 2014 pleasure. Absolutely. Moving on now, we're going to tell you a little bit about what's coming up uh, in the future. But first, and don't go away. We've got lots of good things in just a few moments. Girl Scouts are in the studio with this year's cookie variety. <laughs> However, if it's your New Year's revolution to eat fewer cookies, Zach Bowers has a healthier diet alternative. You just called it a New Year's segments. revolution, and I agree. It is a revolution, That's isn't right. it? That's right. <laughs> That's what it should be. I can't read very well. Well, before we get into the food, let's take a look at some of the other things coming up in the area. Take your family to the skating rink for free. Oh, there's a, we have a skating rink? Cross Point Community Church here in Lima is hosting a family skate party. Roller skating. Roller, skates, Roller right, skating. Right. January 19th, free admission to the first 200 who show up to Edgewood Skate Arena on the 19th between 2 and 4 p.m. However, you do have to pay for skate rental and food, but what a great afternoon of fellowship. I like rollerblading. National March for Life in Washington, D.C. coming up January 22nd. On the 21st, two buses will be departing from Salina First Church of God, and you're invited to be a part of the Mercer County Right to Life send-off rally taking place at 6 p.m. that night. This year's theme is Telling the Truth Without Words. There's special guest speakers that will be a part of that Mercer County send-off. It all happens every year. Pretty exciting just to see so many people supporting life all around the country. Absolutely. Well, another thing that happens every year and is always worth looking forward to, Girl Scout cookie mm, time has arrived. Close your mouth. You don't need to eat that. Tag along. <laughs> There's the nothing wrong with a few cookies here and there. I Even eat, I will I say that. I always eat eight at one time. It's probably frowned upon. If you go by, by size ratio, maybe it's okay. <laughs> They're little cookies. Well, Mark is joined by the cookies. Yep, he's got the cookies. Uh. And a representative from the Appleseed Ridge Girl Scout Council as well. Mark? Thank you, Andy. We're joined now by Amy Orwick from the Girl Scouts of Western Ohio, the Apple Ridge section, I believe, which involves Lima. And it is that time of year again. The Girl Scout cookie sales are now underway. And we were kind of talking a little bit. It's close to 100 years now that the Girl Scouts have been selling cookies. Almost 100 years, yeah. The, um, the original sale was back in 1917 with a troop of girls that wanted to earn money to, for their activities and stuff so they baked cookies and sold them that way and it's progressed to what it is today. Now I know most people like myself love the Girl Scout cookies for a chance to eat them but from the Girl Scouts perspective it's not about selling treats it's really about teaching some important life lessons to the Girl Scouts. Absolutely the program does teach skills like goal setting, um, money management that's a big big concern with with girls these days. Um, communication you know how to talk to people how to set goals um, you know, different things like that. So it, it's more than just a fundraiser. It does teach them skills that they're going to take throughout their whole life. Now the order be set, taking has already begun. You can place your order for now for the next several weeks, but it, it's the, the same old reliable lineup of cookies. Now what's your favorite of the, of the cookies? My favorite is the tag along, but um, in our region and in Ohio, basically the Thin Mint is the top selling cookie. Um, it actually, during Girl Scout cookie time, it's it surpasses the Oreo cookie as the top selling cookie in America. So um, it is a regional thing. Down in Cincinnati, the Samoas is their top seller, but in ours, it's, it's the, the standy, the handy thin mint there. I got to <laughs> assume that you probably have heard some stories over the years about some of the ways the cookies are used and recipes that maybe you don't necessarily think of them being used. Um, actually, yeah, like the, uh, the do si dough, um, there's the chicken recipe. And if you go onto our website, it, you can link to um, our bakery, which is Little Brownie Bakers, and they have a, a whole lot of recipes. But the do si dough um, has been used with um, like a, a chicken recipe. Um, lots of desserts, of course, <laughs> with, the, with the cookies, but um, there's a whole host of recipes. So, I mean, you can, of course, eat them just as they are, or you can incorporate them in your cooking. And then one of the great things about it is it's just $4 for a box at great cost. It, it is a great cost, and all the proceeds do stay locally. Um, they stay with the troop, and then they stay with the council. Um, they support our camping programs and the different activities that are available to the girls. So when you're buying a box of cookies, know that the proceeds are staying here locally. What, uh, outside of the, the greater goals, is there anything specifically you're trying to accomplish with the, this year's sales? We just want to make sure that Girl Scouts is available to all girls. Um, you know, it's a very affordable program. It's a $15 membership fee um, to get into Girl Scouts, but in this time, $15 is a lot for some people. We don't want that to inhibit any girl from joining Girl Scouts. Um, so our, a lot of our proceeds are directed towards making sure that it's available to every girl who wants to become a member. 
Does it matter if you buy directly from a Girl Scout or if you just go to the store and then see them outside? Is there any benefit from trying to seek out your neighborhood troop? Um, you always, I think you always want to support the, the girls in your community. Um, our region goes from Paulding County all the way down through Shelby County, Logan County. So it's, it's 10 counties around the Lima area. So it's always nice to support the girls in your community. But it doesn't matter if you order them, you know, if you pre-order them now or if you get them at a cookie booth outside of your local retailer. Um, we always encourage people to try to hook up with a, a troop. And if you're not asked, you can call our Lima office. I will put you in touch with a troop or I'll get your information and, and have a troop contact you because it's always best to work with that girl so she's learning those skills. Um, that, that the sale promotes. Yeah, you can call the number on your screen, 419-225-4085. You can also go online to girlscoutsofwesternohio.org. And I know this is going about to become a very busy time for you. Do you take any special time before the, uh, the, the busyness of March to kind of get everything settled down and ready to go? Uh, yeah, we do. Actually, I just got back from a two-week trip to uh, Florida and the Bahamas, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Amy. Of course, the Girl Scout cookie sales will continue through March 10th to place your order. As you said, you can call the Lima office at 419-225-4085. We're shifting our food focus now to something that possibly is part of your New Year's resolution, eating healthy. And we're going to dive into the book of Genesis to find our foods of choice for today. Genesis 129, Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. Yet today those plants yielding seeds and every tree which has fruit continues to be nourishing food for our bodies. Zach Bowers is back on Faith and Friends with another round of recipes. Why can't I eat blueberries? Easy. Well, thank you, Mark. Part of the Bible also tells us that our body is a temple for God and that we are to take care of that temple. And part of the way we do that is using those berries, particularly to keep ourselves healthy. And that's what we are talking about today. Jennifer and Andy, I'm happy to have you on set. We are excited for this segment, aren't we? Absolutely. He's already eating all the stuff. We better get moving. The really We're good fighting stuff. here Stop on it. set. We need to get going. I'm, I'm getting healthier right now. We're talking juicing today, and, and this is what we're excited about because there's so many possibilities with juicing. We are going to both be talking about a juicing machine and the Nutribullet, something that you may be familiar with. I've never heard of that. have been very popular. Well, we're going to tell you about it today because we're uh, excited to get this going. We're going to have four different recipes. Andy's excited to try this, I know. Must vegetables. I'm excited to get Andy to but try the, the vegetables. The proportion of fruit to Look vegetable at this. is higher on the fruit side, so I'm much more encouraged than I was all week long <laughs> hearing about what I was going to be made to drink. Andy was agonizing over the, yeah, the possible sleep. vegetables that you'll be eating today, but I think he's going to enjoy it. <laughs> Before we get started, though, we do want to give you a few juicing tips. Of course, all the recipes today are going to be put on our website so that you can take part in this juicing activity, this fun activity as well. Juice with so us. Encourage you to juice with us and go to the <laughs> website. But first, a few juicing tips you can see here that carrots, apples, and oranges, they're going to be the easiest on your stomach. Maybe you're a new juicer, like Andy, <laughs> and you want to start off easy. Well, these are a few things that are going to be easy for you to take in your stomach um, off the bat. Spinach and kale, you're going to see those in our recipes today. A great way to add vitamins, add chlorophyll, which is going to help oxygenate, uh, help me guys, oxygenate the, the blood. And gives oxygen. you oxygen. Yes, gives your oxygen in the blood. <laughs> and so that's going to be a great way to, to increase the health there. And then Many of the juicing recipes you can see do have medicinal purposes because we have all natural vegetables, all natural fruit here that's going to give us a lot of the vitamins that they were intended to give us all in a juicing segment. So, so you're you telling me some of them are not good on your stomach because some, some are, are excellent on your stomach. Some items could be rougher on your stomach if you're not used to them. Like nails? <laughs> like but like if you juice nails. <laughs> I've heard that if you eat or consume anything for 21 days, you will like it. So 21 days of kale Hence just might be your plan. the popularity of coffee. There's the challenge. 21 days of juicing. We're not what? juicing coffee today. Let's get started, though, okay? Let's, let's. We're going to start off with the first recipe, something easy for Andy. It's called Blue Moon, and it's going to be this one right here okay. in the middle. Is it already poured? What Blue Moon consists of, yes, it is already poured. One, what it consists of is spinach, kale, blackberries, blueberries, carrots, apples, and pears there. And this is going to give you a very fruity and berry taste. Right. How's it taste? Right. I like the fruit. You can taste the fruit in there, the berries, maybe? Can you taste yep. the kale? I can taste the kale. You can taste the kale. But can it doesn't make it spinach? terrible. <sighs> it All right. Make it terrible. You I hear will drink that? This. He, we have gotten him to drink you know, a little bit some, of a green vegetable. Some ice and sugar. 
It would be a very good drink. <laughs> well, this is made with our juice. We have a juicing machine here on set, and you can see that all three of our four recipes are going to be through the juicing machine, whereas one will be nutribulleted. The difference being the juicing machine will only spit out pure works. juice. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you put in there is going to give you pure juice out, out for you to drink. And I can see you enjoy the berry It would be good with Girl Scout cookies. Perhaps it could be. Maybe you could try to juice Girl Scout cookies. We're open to all possibilities here today. You can't waste the Girl Scout cookies. That's right. Well, we need to move on to the next one. This is the one that I know you're going to be most excited about because of the color. Look, at, oh, you can see there, Andy Friendly Green Juice. This recipe is actually called Kid Friendly Green Juice. We just changed it to Andy. Does not smell good. Well, you better pour. I'm not a good pour. Let's talk about why it's green. I what is in this? You think it smells good? Spinach. It's not about what smells good. Yes, it's about it is. what's good for your body. You can see here romaine, yes. parsley, celery, cucumber. This is a lot of your vegetables. Hopefully, the carrots and apple and orange you're going to find will give you a little bit of I don't like carrots. fruity taste. Carrots are not a fruit. Sorry, apple and oranges. <laughs> How's this taste? This green. Oh, it smells horrible. <laughs> Kid friendly green juice. It's what's good for you, Andy. It's going to keep you alive for a long time. Drinking vegetables. Both of you, though, have young children, so maybe this is a way that so you can, can get them to eat them. healthy. <laughs> now, you know what, though? It's sweeter than you think. It's terrible. It is not very good. This Don't is, tell your children that. This is not Andy-friendly green juice, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a great, again, a way to introduce some vitamins, some healthy you want some more? elements into your diet. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we need to move on, so we're moving on stuff. to the... Well, hold on. Right? You're going to like the next one. Can I refill? What we're yes yeah, sure, what we're talking now. This is going to be the one recipe that we nutribullet. Now all of these recipes can be nutribulleted. The difference being that when you do this with the nutribullet, you're going to end up with a more more pulp and a little more texture. In Ooh. so it's a little bit different way of doing it, but it's still drinkable in a, a juice. So what we have here, this is the strawberry pineapple mint juice. This is contains exactly what it says: uh, pineapple, mint peeled, a cup of strawberries. I like the look of that one pear, and then 30 mint leaves, and that's going to give that mint taste into it. So we're going to quickly Nutribullet this here. What are the benefits of mint to your diet, Zach? You know, I couldn't tell you particularly <laughs> other than maybe some fresh breath. Is, is it good for you, though? Is mint oh, a yeah. good thing no, for it, you? No, it, it not only does it cleanse your palate, but it actually helps with your digestive Okay. Um, uh, I've never thought needs. of eating mint. We're going to quickly Nutribullet. This is extremely easy to do. If you have one of these, you lock it in, you churn it, and you let it go. Look at it go. And it's just going to eat it right you up. set it and then forget it? Is that how it works? You can. You can walk away for 30, to one, 30 seconds to a minute, depending how much pulp you want in your drink. And so you can let it go. You can see it's already taken all of that pineapple, all of that pear. What if you put ice cream in it? Would that work? I think it would work. I think you could. Give it like a great it taste. looks like it has ice cream in it. Just imagine in your mind that it's ice cream. You tell yourself I really like that you're going to have ice cream. So we're going to... Pour you some Look of this out. quickly. Whoa! That is to, that's not to the brim. Try some of this. This should give a very fruity. Ooh, it smells good. And this is our. It smells really good. Thank you. Wow, it's, it's, it's very. Uh, that smells excellent. Wow, I can smell the mint. You can smell the mint. That's really good. It's thick. That's good. Now we are. We do have one that's last recipe up. down there. You see That'll wake you up. The, the carrot one. pineapple orange juice. We're not going to taste it, but I did want to tell you that we tried this carrot pineapple orange juice right here. Mm. We tried it without the lemon. That's really good. And I can Sorry. tell you that the lemon makes a world of a difference because it does contain lemon in there. It's a very fruity drink, but a, a wonderful way to get some carrots in your diet. Um, so another great recipe. Again, go to our website. You can find all the recipes for today's juicing. Um, Why can't and, I drink? And also, you can go right ahead and drink it. So we encourage you just a great and a fun way, perhaps to try different concoctions to bring health into your diet. Now, you can't now drink I can't drink it. Sorry. So I encourage you to go to the website. We thank you for joining us on Faith and Friends. And these guys are going to drink some more juice. <laughs> well, as good as those juices looked, I, I think I'll stick with the tag-alongs and the other cookies from the Girl Scouts. Before we go, we do want to revisit our verse of the day. It comes from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 17 through 18. Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Hopefully that will provide some inspiration through these cold winter weeks. I want to thank all of our guests today on Faith and Friends. For Andy Lynch and Jennifer Beck, I'm Mark Kuntz. We'll see you next time on Faith and Friends.